Today we have over 60,000 police, judges, prosecutors, prison wardens, and supporters in 86 countries. And let me tell you what we want to do, then I'll explain why we want to do it, and then I'll explain what you can do to help. We want to end drug prohibition around the world just like we ended alcohol prohibition in the United States in 1933. Because as law enforcers, we understand that the day after we ended that terrible law, Al Capone and all his smuggling buddies were out of business. They were off our streets. They were no longer out there killing each other to control that very lucrative market. They were no longer killing us cops charged with fighting that useless war and they were no longer killing our children caught in crossfire and drive-by shootings. All the things we experience today. So we know that if we legalize these drugs, we can take them out of the hands of the criminals and we can end the violence. <laughs> then when we regulate the drugs, we can do some other wonderful things. We can end overdose deaths. Let me tell you, from 14 years of living in the streets with folks that uh, were using these hard drugs, I can tell you nobody dies of an overdose because they shoot more and more dope. They die because they don't know how much of that tiny little package of powder they're buying is really the drug and how much is the cutting agent. Too much drug in there, you're dead. And in an illegal, unregulated market, they will never know. We can save all those lives, folks. We could prevent half of all potential cases of AIDS and hepatitis in this country because according to the Center for Disease Control, 50% of all new cases can be traced directly back to intravenous drug users sharing needles. If drugs were legal, they would not have to do that. We would save all those lives. And then, and then when we start treating drug abuse as a health problem, Instead of a crime problem, we can actually save the lives of all these young folks, just like yourself, who we are destroying all their hopes for the future through arrest and imprisonment. We know at LEAP that if we legalize and regulate drugs, we can do four things. We can reduce death, disease, crime, and addiction. It's happened in every country that has uh, lowered these repressive laws. In every country where they've done it, they have less drug use today than they used to have. Let me tell you about just one of those countries. In Portugal, Portugal decriminalized all drugs 11 years ago, July 1st, 2001. And all the drug warriors like me said, Oh my God, if you do this, it'll be a disaster. You will become the drug tourist capital of the world. Nobody will dare even walk down your beautiful beaches because of the needles that will be sticking up out of the sand. Well, folks, none of that happened. As a matter of fact, what did happen was extraordinary. Drug use in every age group went down after they decriminalized drugs. But it was the biggest drop was among the youngest people. For children from 13 to 15 years old, drug abuse declined by 25%. For young folks from 16 to 18, drug use declined by 22%. Now those are significant. But other wonderful things happen. They're still using that same terrible heroin over there that they buy on the streets. They don't know how, what, what it's cut with or how much is it, uh, really heroin. But because they no longer treat drug abuse as a health problem, 
because they treat those folks as so, or as a crime problem, because they treat those folks as someone with a health problem, they're not afraid to come forward when they or a friend feel like they're overdosing. And because of that one fact, they have cut overdose deaths from heroin by 52%. Yeah. I just told you about all these terrible blood-borne diseases, AIDS and hepatitis. You know, HIV, new, new cases of HIV reported by intravenous drug users in Portugal have dropped 71% since they decriminalized drugs. So we know decriminalization works wonders. We don't want it. We, we would accept it. It's certainly a lot better than what we have. But what we want is full legalization because that is the only thing that will end the violence. That's the only thing that will take this out of the hands of the criminals. How are you today, sir? Let me tell you what we've done instead. One day at a time. We've fought the war on drugs now for 42 years. We started in in uh, 1970 after Richard Nixon declared war on drugs. In that 42 years we have spent 1.5 trillion of your tax dollars to fight this war on drugs. Every year we continue it, it'll be another 70 billion dollars down that same rat hole. And here's what we have to show for all that money. In that 42 years, we have made more than 42 million arrests in this country alone for nonviolent drug offenses. We've done everything we can do to possibly destroy those folks' lives. You know, that's a lot of money to waste. That's a lot of lies to waste. But you would think, with all this stuff happening in the U.S., at least we would be reducing the amount of people using drugs and the amount of people addicted to our drugs. Not so. According to DEA, before we started the war on drugs, they estimate that we had about four million people in this country above the age of 12 who had ever used an illegal drug. Folks, that was two percent of that population back then. Today, DEA is telling us we have 112 million people above the age of 12 using an illegal drug. That's 46% of this population, and we got here under a war on drugs. This is not just a failed policy, it is a, it is a self-perpetuating, constantly expanding policy disaster. Every time we arrest a parent and throw them in prison because of drug use, we're making an orphan out of those kids, and we're guaranteeing virtually guaranteeing the next generation of young folks using hard drugs. There's a lot better ways to do this, folks. Let me tell you about one other country that has had a true success, and that would be Switzerland. Sixteen years ago, the Swiss people said, we're tired of arresting our children, basically, for making the mistake of using heroin. They said, we're going to treat this as a health problem, and they created clinics all around the country where if you're a heroin user, you can actually go in and inject that drug up to three times a day. Government issued heroin. Again, the drug warriors say this would be a disaster. Well, it's not. In 16 years, they have not had one overdose death. Not one. AIDS and hepatitis in Switzerland has now dropped that country to the lowest per capita rate of any country in Europe. It used to be the highest. Crime! Crime was cut by 60%. Now the, the heroin's distributed to users on a sliding scale. But if you have no money, it's free. And what that means is a heroin user doesn't have to break into your house at night and steal your television or do something else to get the money for the drugs. And of course, if they get caught, that could then become a, a crime of violence to get away. So none of those crimes occur anymore. And because the heroin is virtually free at these clinics, there are no dopers on the street corners selling heroin. Because you can't beat heroin, uh, be free, right? What fool would buy from it? So, 
the most important thing about this whole thing is in the last 10 years in Switzerland there's been an 82% decline in new heroin users 82% less than 10 years ago and what they attribute that to is they say the dealers are no longer in the neighborhoods convincing these young people to pick up that needle and become the next statistic they can't sell it on the streets so there's no no reason for them to be out there peddling it and 82 percent decline that's a real success story and those of us that leave believe in success stories let me tell you about one success story the only one we've had in the united states when it comes to social drugs and that's the worst drug known to human beings far and away the most addictive drug that we know of what drug is that no no this isn't alcohol this is water but uh, but but the drug is not alcohol that's the second worst the drug is cigarettes <laughs> By 1940, 1985, 42% of all the people in this country smoke cigarettes. We said we're killing far too many people. We have to stop people from smoking cigarettes. Well, folks, we didn't start a war on cigarette smokers. We didn't put R.J. Reynolds in prison for uh, dealing in, in drugs. What we did was we started a very strong educational program, and then we pretty much regulated them out of existence we said you can smoke if you want to smoke at home fine you can smoke smoke at home smoke in your car you can't smoke in any public place and in a 30-year period those two things education and regulation cut the use of tobacco by more than half it went from 42 percent down to 17 percent in 30 years and what we at least want to point out is we didn't have to destroy one life for this wonderful success story. We didn't have to put one person in prison for this wonderful success story. There's better ways to spend our money, folks. Now, how can you change this? That's really easy. Over here at the CRC tent, I've left uh, a sheet for people to fill out. If you put your name, your email, and just your zip code of where you're from, You'll start getting our newsletters. We're going to change this. I say we got 60,000 now in 86 countries. We want a, a couple million private citizens who say, finally, these cops, judges, and prosecutors are making some sense. When we get that, we will go down to Washington, D.C. and force the legislators to change these laws. But we've got to have your help to do it. So please sign up over there. <laughs> All right, thanks very much for your time. And uh, you can find us at leap, L-E-A-P dot C-C. And if that's too hard to remember, just look for cops say legalized drugs dot org. Come and join us, please. We will change this. Things are really changing already. You know, there's, there's leaders of 12 Latin American countries a month ago came out calling for an end to the war on drugs, treat drug abuse as a health problem. That's all we want. I was down in Mexico City last month uh, working on this stuff, and down there they are so, so troubled by this. You know, in the last five years, in Mexico, they have had over 60,000 drug prohibition murders. 60,000. And other countries in Central America have it even worse, like Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador. In Guatemala, they say they have 43 drug prohibition murders per 100,000 population. That doesn't mean much to you now, but let me, let me put that in context. In the United States, all murders, not just drug prohibition murders, all murders combined, we have four per 100,000. They have 43 drug prohibition murders per 100,000. And I call these drug prohibition murders, not drug-related murders. Guys, these didn't happen because someone got high on drugs and went out and killed someone. Any more than 
people were high on alcohol when they committed the uh, Saturday night massacre of uh, on St. Valentine's Day over alcohol prohibition. When, when Al Capone sent those killers out to do that, they weren't high on alcohol. This is just the way he conducted business under prohibition. And the people that murdered the 60,000 people in Mexico were not high on drugs. This is the way you do it. You know, when, when things are completely prohibited, when there's no legality to it, you can't call a cop to protect your, your drugs or your money. Everybody's got to get a gun, and boy, they get a gun. And the murder rate just will go through the ceiling. We've got to legalize these drugs. Thank you all very much. Back to some of this beautiful music you have. Thanks, Jack. You're wonderful. We're going to have spiritual res up here pretty soon. They're just getting ready. They're almost ready. I guess in the meantime, I'll, I'll go over some of the little tidbits for you if I could. Uh, we're going to have a, a set that's going to run into 420. You know, be careful. The cops are on the periphery. They are giving out tickets. You know, be aware of your circumstances. Be aware of who's around you, especially if you're on the edge. Also, uh, you know, make sure you pick up your litter. Don't leave a mess today because those people that are putting on this event, the Cannabis Reform Coalition, will have to stay here for another couple hours cleaning up the grounds. CRC, the Cannabis Reform Coalition, are over on that side. They have a booth. They're selling t-shirts. They're, you know, giving out information about the organization, the issue. Please go visit them. Captain Candy is one of the sponsors here today. Patronize him. He's got some wonderful candy over there. Um, you know, make sure you watch your parking meters. They're, you know, they, they are, do have cops, they do have parking meter people. You don't see them, but they're around the edges. Have a wonderful time today. Enjoy yourselves, but be careful and be, you know, clean up, be respectful of each other. I think I see the band coming up on stage. Uh, this is Spiritual Res. They're a great band. You're going to enjoy them. Have a wonderful next hour and have a wonderful 420 when we get to it. I'm sure they're going to be jumping up and down at that point and they'll give you the lead.